Peter Senge, the guy that wrote the fifth discipline and that, those quotes that I gave you on learning organizations, defined something he called the ladder of influence, and it was based on Korzybski's work. He says that our minds are like ladders. He says, first of all, we observe things going on around us. At the bottom of the ladder, this is where we're taking in data. And he says, as we move up the ladder of consciousness or awareness, we start to select the data that we focus on and we throw away the rest of it. And then we start to add meaning to it. And this could be cultural, it could be personal, it could be based on your style. We start making, you know, selective data. You know, if you have an attitude about somebody and you really feel like this person is a jerk, you start to see how some of the things they do, they're a jerk. And anything that isn't consistent with that, you tend to throw away. And, and, and then you start to add meaning to it, and you say, you know, this, you know, this person, because they act this way, it means they're a jerk. And you start to form an attitude. You start to make assumptions about the individual or the situation, and now you're adding more meaning. And then you draw conclusions, and based on those uh, conclusions, you develop beliefs, and that defines your actions. And this is called circular fil filtr uh, filtration, where you're, you're looking at selective data, you believe what you believe, and you continue to reinforce your beliefs about things. It's true in how you relate to individuals. It's true in how you relate to your family members. It's true in how you relate to your job. And it's true for a whole organization is in how we relate to the competition out in the marketplace. Creativity is about seeing what you're not seeing. Get rid of the filters, get rid of the, the assumptions, test every conclusion that you have, and figure out how we can be more competitive. Now, we talked a little bit this morning about empathy. And this is what empathy is. It's making the shift. It's being able for one individual who has their assumptions and so forth, who is maybe a totally different style than somebody else, making the shift to try to understand where this person is coming from, tuning into their space, bridging the communication gap, working together as a team. I'm bringing this up in the light of creative thinking as a reinforcement of this morning. We spent the whole morning talking about interpersonal communication. The need for it is really huge in organizations because we have this working against us. We're all different styles. We see things in a different way. And there's lots of reasons why it's hard to be as effective as a team as we can be. It's up to every individual to get creative enough to be able to tune into other people's space and to figure out how we can get better. I've had people say, I quit coming up with ideas because every time I come up with an idea about new business processes and I share it, I get shot down. Nobody ever follows any of the ideas. So I'm going to quit coming up with ideas. And what I usually tell them is, your problem is you're a terrible salesperson. And you're blaming the customer for not buying. Has anybody ever been in sales? Okay, yeah, I used to run a sales force. And it's really easy for salespeople out in the field. I say, why did you lose the deal? What happened? And they come up with every reason in the book why they lost the deal. Bottom line is, you lost the deal because you weren't as good a salesperson as the other one was. It's the only thing that you can act on. You try to get better and better and better. There's lots of ideas that everybody needs to come up with, but not, you know, you could take an idea to Jason, and he says, that's a stupid idea. Okay, fine. I'll stop bringing him ideas. No, that's not the way to present an idea. You start to figure out how to sell your ideas to different individuals because they're all different. For those people who are in sales, they realize that there are technical buyers who have to get all kinds of detail information and they have to think about it and they have to analyze it and then there's other people that kind of work by emotion. And you start to be able to figure out who's who and how to sell to this person and how to sell to this person. You start to realize you're able to sell somebody to the degree that you have a relationship with them. And we need to have better ideas and, 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 and better execution of ideas. And it's not enough just to be creative. We've got to get good ideas, good ideas that you're willing to fight for, willing, ideas that you're willing to sell. And if you don't make the sale, realize it's, you're just not a very good salesperson. So just keep practicing and get better and get better. Don't get discouraged. As we start to tune into people and be able to shift to their space, we're able to change their perception. We're able to work together as a team, 
building trust and respect, all those kinds of things. The problems that we have, whether they're people or situations, as long as you frame it like a problem, it's something to complain about. You can take the same situation and frame it as an opportunity. When it's an opportunity, there's something you can do. You go to that person, you work with them, you do something you've never done before. Maybe you take them out to dinner because you can't think of anything else to do. And all of a sudden, things start to change.